Hello, this is my last leadership toolkit response for uh, chapter 12, um, applying the social change model. Uh, one of my first points that I wanted to make was about the values and reasons for involvement. This is on page um, 264. It says, like-minded souls will typically explore their justice ideas together. For example, the research suggests that students with justice beliefs tend to engage civically more than peers without these beliefs. And I really see this happening a lot, um, especially in my internship right now. A lot of issues have come up where um, a lot of people who are really committed and have this like deep understanding and education behind their commitment to so social justice, um, I think are obviously going to be more involved in the conversation and more willing to speak about issues going on within our internship about social justice. But I will say that I think it's hard when not everyone's on the same um, the same base. I think that uh, I really resonated with this quote just because um, I think it's hard when not everyone has had the same experiences, not everyone has had this exposure to maybe higher risk um, training about diversity and inclusion. And I also think it's hard when, um, like I said, not everyone's on the same level. And it makes it harder when you're interacting with students who come from different backgrounds as you and you haven't been trained or exposed to any of that higher risk situations in a, um, a setting just with your staff members then I wonder, you know, how are you going to help the students that are here for pre-college? Um, and then lastly, on um, page 270, this was under the header, Speak Truth to Leadership in a Group Process. And this was really, um, really interesting to read just because um, there's been a lot of, I would say, drama in my internship right now regarding social justice and inclusion when it comes to the students, but also our own staff. And the quote reads, uh, leaders will be most successful when they use tension and controversy from this tension to disrupt ineffective systems creatively and to engage others involved in the controversy to understand what power dynamics and other social justice issues may prevent or block change momentum. And uh, this was very interesting to read just because I think that um, my staff at this point when we've like dealt with some controversy when it comes to certain members on our staff not responding or not um, reporting an incident correctly when it comes to bias. Um, the leadership process in my group, I think, is definitely taking a change right now. Um, and so this quote really resonated simply because I think um, people have been very generic when addressing these issues, whether it's in our group chat or in an email. And I think people are fed up about that. I think they just want to know who is the one, you know, who are the people that are being problematic and where can that begin to create some change. And uh, it may, like, it sounds a little bit harsh, but I think some people on my staff are ready to start, you know, calling people out and calling them into the conversation. And it can be hard to do that, especially if you are an underrepresented person yourself. Like, I think about my identity as a Latina, sometimes I don't always feel comfortable calling in or calling out even like some of my staff members who I think may be a little bit problematic in their opinions and how we help students. And so I think that if, you know, us as leaders, us as graduate students in this internship can begin to do that in a way that's helpful and also respectful to just a broader group, I think that this leadership can eventually lead to change.